Afre and Tiro, welcome to another Project Pro video. Today we want to talk to you about how you can pay for college and how you can make college affordable for yourself. Today's presenters are Jason Sanchez, which is me, and Gerald Madrid. Just a quick disclaimer, the information presented in this video is based purely off our research, and as we have said before, we highly encourage you to conduct your own research as well as an addition to the information you will see here today. So, let us begin. For the longest time, there has been a stigma that has prevented many talented people from furthering their education. That stigma is the affordability of college. Do I have enough money for college? How will I be able to get the money? Can I afford living away from home? How am I going to balance work and school? These questions are always in mind before and sometimes even during college. Well, we at Project Pro are here to help you. Fear not, for we are about to show you some ways you can make college affordable for yourself. So, start off here is our table of contents you will be covering four different sections today first we'll cover saving for college such as savings accounts and child funds secondly we'll talk about scholarships what kind of scholarships are available as well as how and where to look for these scholarships thirdly we'll discuss borrowing funds and the difference between loans and finally we look at ways to earn money through different methods so saving for college there are many different ways to save for college so let us look at two methods that you can use for yourself so the first method, you could set up a college fund. So one way people save up for college is not done themselves per se, but is actually done by their parents through setting up a college fund for their child from birth. So basically before the child is born or when the child is still young, parents can put aside some of their earnings into a separate funding for their child so that when their child reaches college age, they are or they have enough money to attend college. Another example could be the 529 plan. So the name comes from an IRS tax code and it allows adults to save up expenses in their child's name. Tax benefits include earnings growing free of federal taxes if used for college expenses. The person who funds the account pays taxes on the cash before it is put into the 529 plan. Then we have savings accounts. As such, besides plans, there is the route of traditional savings accounts. This is so any income has a little taken out to be deposited into that account. Most benefits of this include that it is fairly easy to make a deposit. However, most accounts could have low interest rates. Therefore, it might not grow as much as with other saving methods. Scholarships. So another way people acquire money for college is by applying for scholarships. Now we have all heard this word used a lot. However, sometimes we do not necessarily know the in-depth meaning of these scholarships. Let us explore more on the concept of scholarships different kinds of scholarships, as well as ways to look for a scholarship for you. So, here I'll discuss two types of scholarships. The first one is the merit-based scholarships. So these scholarships are earned through academic achievement and merit. These include a certain GPA score, athletic feats, or extracurricular activities. Examples of merit-based scholarships include the UNCF STEM scholarship and the Series Special Excellence Award. Next, we have the income-based scholarships. So these scholarships are based more on students who receive financial aid on an income basis. Some qualifications for this type of scholarship are sometimes determined by family income. However, some of these types of scholarships may also depend on a combination of both merit as well as financial need factors. Examples of income-based scholarships, which may be already familiar to you, are the Pell Grant as well as Sheffa. How to look for scholarships. So there are two different ways you can look for scholarships. However, due to the pandemic, options may be limited. However, that does not mean you shouldn't try. So the first option, if it is possible, is visitation. So you could visit your college campus, your college campus's financial aid office, or the institution you plan to attend. You could also look at your local library's reference section. You could also ask your community and ethnicity-based organizations if you are part of that or you're familiar with any organizations. And you can also ask your employers or your, your parents' employers. Then we have online options. This is probably more plausible due to the ongoing pandemic. So you could visit the different scholarship websites, or you could actually visit the U.S. Department of Labor's website, Free Scholarship Search Tool, which is linked below. Now let's move on to the next part of this section of this presentation, known as borrowing or applying for the different loans that you can avail for such as federal loans and private loans federal loans are lent by the government with terms and conditions that are already set by law 
there are many benefits when you apply for federal loans, such as fixed interest rates and income-driven repayment plans. When it comes to payments with federal loans, you don't have to pay until after graduation. Now, there are two types of federal loans, and they are subsidized and unsubsidized loans. And we will talk about that in the following slide. But let's move on to private loans. With private loans, these are more towards private organizations, such as banks, credit unions, state-based or state-affiliated organizations. Do note that these lenders or organizations have their own terms and conditions set out. With private loans, they are generally more expensive than federal loans. And when it comes to payments, they require you to pay while you are still in school. However, some lenders or organizations do allow you to defer or put off while you are still in school. When it comes to interest rates, private loans can have variable or fixed interest rates depending on your circumstances. Now let's go and talk more about the different federal loans that you can be able to apply for. The two loans are subsidized and unsubsidized. So how much can you be able to borrow? Now your school determines the amount that you can borrow. However, the difference between those two loans is that with subsidized loans, the amount that you borrow can't exceed your financial need. With unsubsidized loans, the amount that you can borrow is based on your cost of attendance and other financial aid that you receive. Now who pays for the interest? For subsidized loans, the U.S. Department of Education pays for the interest depending on the circumstances, such as while you're in school at least half time, for the first six months after you leave a school, or during a period of deferment. Deferment means a postponement of loan payments. Who pays for the interest in unsubsidized loans? Now you are solely responsible for paying the interest in an unsubsidized loan during all periods. But Here's the catch. There is no requirement to demonstrate financial need in an unsubsidized loan. With a subsidized loan, you need to, it's, it is required to demonstrate financial need. However, interest does not accumulate while the student is still in school. Another way other than saving, applying for scholarships or applying for loans is earning. One way of earning is through work study or having an on-campus job. There are many benefits to having an on-campus job, such as working around your schedule. Another benefit is transportation. Transportation is not necessary as you are on campus. You don't have to drive to a different area or different town so that you can be able to work. Instead, your job is on campus. Another benefit is the familiarity with college and campus resources. So as you work on campus, you become more familiar with the different resources that are provided to you when you are working there. Last but not least, they pay you federal minimum wage of $7.25 per hour. So where can I be able to find these on-campus jobs or apply as a work study? One way is through official school or college websites. So specifically, you can be able to go to any of the official school websites and go to a specific section about work studies. Other ways you can be able to find these job vacancies or apply as a work study is through the Career Center or through your student emails. For example, with NMC, you can be able to find those job opportunities or job vacancy announcements through your student emails. It's usually sent through NMC, so please be on the lookout for any of the job vacancies that may be announced in the future. However, if you would like to inquire as soon as possible or if you do have any questions, you can contact Ms. Nita de Leon Guerrero, which is our NNC career manager, and she will be able to help you with any of the questions and inquiries that you may have. Her email is nita.dlguerrero at marianas.edu. Another way you can earn is through off-campus job. One benefit to having an off-campus job is through more job options or a variety of job options. By going off campus, students can pick from a plethora of job options. There is a good chance that he or she will be able to find a relevant job off campus. Another benefit is the exposure to the real world for your resume. Not only that, another benefit is the choice to work more hours. With an on-campus job, 
you are limited to work a certain amount of hours bi-weekly. For example, with MNC, you work 40 hours bi-weekly. However, with an off-campus job, you actually have the choice to work more hours if you decide to do so. Another benefit is higher wages. However, one challenge is that private sector employees do not have to work around your school schedule. So please note that that is one big expectation when we are trying to find a job as students. Other than the different job opportunities through on-campus jobs or off-campus jobs, we will now talk about the different aids as well as programs that you can apply for so that you can be able to afford college. One way is through the GI Bill. The GI Bill provides benefits for veterans and family members by covering some or all of the costs of school or training. Here are some forms of GI Bill such as the post 9-11 GI Bill, the Montgomery GI Bill Active Duty, and the Montgomery GI Bill Selective Reserve. To learn more about this information, you can be able to go to www.va.gov and you can be able to learn about these three forms of GI Bills. Last but not least, we have an ROTC program through NMC partnered with UOG. The Army ROTC is a unique college elective the credits that you receive from the ROTC classes will go towards your diploma. And when you graduate, you receive a diploma and a commission as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army. There are many benefits to joining the Army ROTC through NMC. On graduation, those who complete the ROTC at NMC and the University of Guam will receive a bachelor's degree and commission as a second lieutenant. Becoming a commissioned officer offers a higher income. During the first year of service, a second lieutenant will be paid approximately $54,000, including a tax-free housing allowance. Overall, these are just some benefits that you can be able to avail for once you have completed the ROTC program and graduated. So if you want to learn more about these benefits, and if you are interested, you can go to www marianas.edu forward slash army ROTC for more information. This concludes the end of our presentation. We thank you so much for watching this video. Overall, these are just some ways you can be able to afford college. However, we do encourage you to continue researching on the different information that was presented here so that you can be able to afford college. If you have any questions or inquiries, please contact Project Proa at projectproa at marianas.edu. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to NMC's YouTube channel, and click on the bell notification so that you can be notified on the future videos that will be posted. Once again, we thank you so much for watching this video and we hope you have a great one.